welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, and joining me today is Stephanie Skierman. Stephanie is founder of Dwelling Place Ministries. She's an author, she's a speaker, and she's a homeschooling mom of six. <laughs> and Stephanie, I'm excited because Stephanie is joining us today to tell us about hearing from Jesus in our everyday life. Now, I think everybody knows the picture of, you know, like the Ten Commandments and Moses going up on the mountain and hearing God's voice. And it's that's how we hear God's voice, right? Yes. But that's not always how it is. And and that was just Moses. Can everybody hear from Jesus? Absolutely. You're never too young or too old to hear from Jesus. Um, he wants to speak to you. Doesn't matter who you are or where you are or what you've done. Doesn't matter if you're the worst person on the planet or the best. Uh, the Lord wants to speak to you and he is working all the time to uh, get your attention and speak to you. We just have to catch the subtle hints. Now, you're a, a busy person, I can tell just from the things I've described already, but one of the things that you do is you lead something called fire camp. Mm -hmm. And you have young people there, of course, old people come too, but it's geared toward young people. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things you teach the young people, right? Yes. Is how to hear God. Yes. Um, one of the most important things that we do in fire camp is that we uh, want to have every child have an encounter with Jesus before the camp is over. And we started out with uh, kids about ages eight to 15. And, um, but as the time has gone, adults have gotten jealous and said, please do an adult. So we do adult fire camps and missionary and fire camps, and we've sent it now all over the world. Um, it's a, a fun time of just learning to know and experience what the presence of the Lord feels like. That's our main goal. We don't, there's no entertainment involved in this. We just simply want to experience the presence of the Lord and enjoy Him and, and know what it's like when He speaks to us when the angels are, what does it feel like when the angels are around us? What does it feel like when we, how do we pray for somebody and ask, asking the Lord what, how he would pray and how, what, what do we do? So we're always asking Jesus what's on his mind. So Now, what about somebody who might say, well, why does, why does Jesus want to speak to me? Uh, in fact, tell me about Gertrude. Yes. <laughs> well, um, I was teaching an adult Sunday school class many years ago. And uh, I had this dear, precious Gertrude, who I picked up for church every day, every Sunday. And she was in her 80s, I believe. And um, she had this very small house that she lived in. It was very small, 10, 10 or 12 by 12 feet. That's all, the only space mm. she had. And all day long, Gertrude sat in this space and watched Christian TV and just loved on Jesus. And, but one day she, she comes into Sunday school and she says, Stephanie, she says, why on earth would God want to speak to me? I don't talk to anybody else. I don't have any way yeah, of evangelizing. Yeah, she has no influence on you know, anybody. She felt like right? she had nobody to talk uh -huh. to, except to love her own family when they would come. And, and I said, oh, Gertrude, I said, you are precious in God's sight. And, and I said, think about it. You have the best job on the planet. You get to just worship Jesus. And I said, yes, he wants to talk to you. He's, you're just as, you're even maybe more important than talking to the president at times, but he wants to speak to you the same as he wants to speak to anybody else on the earth, no matter what kind of uh, power or influence they have. And she, Gertrude got a hold of that concept mm -hmm. and began to have the most precious experiences not only talking to Jesus, but him talking back to her. And she was realizing that he, is, he does want to talk to me. She would just come with tears and amazing experiences. I know she was having angelic experiences even every day. And even through the night, she was having amazing heaven dreams. Yeah, and so if somebody is feeling like, like Gertrude, mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I have no influence, I, I, you know, but even Gertrude, mm -hmm. even if you're just in a, in a little room by yourself all day long, you can influence the world mm -hmm. by hearing from Jesus That's and right. prayer and worship and His Absolutely. presence. Now, how about for you? How did you learn to begin to hear from Jesus in your everyday life? 
Um, I think one of the the funniest experiences I had with it, I was I always have felt like I could hear from the Lord and and hear His voice and and understand Him, but. Um, I realized that the Lord was repeating things through my day a lot of times. And one of the funniest experiences was I was sitting at a stop sign one day and uh, Max Locato had just written a book called uh, 316, The Numbers of Hope. And so this billboard had this book advertised and the numbers 316 were huge on this board. And I'm sitting there staring at these numbers and I thought, wait a minute, that's my birthday. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, I wake up at 316 almost every single night, to, and I know the Lord wants to pray. You know, He wants me to pray, and so I pray at 316, and I'm like, He's really talking to me through those numbers. And it was, a, it was just a stunning revelation. I look back on it now, and I just laugh because everything's 316. I'll go to a hotel, and my, you know, my room number's 316, my... You know, and I still wake up at 316 and I'll look at the clock at 316 during the day. So that number is all over the place. Well, we can obviously tie that to scripture so easily because of John 316. And many times if you're seeing numbers repeat, like 111, 11, 11, those kinds of numbers, you know, people will say, what does 444 mean? And, and so you tie those numbers to scripture and the Lord may be speaking to you right out of his word and he may be giving you the address you know one two three four can even be a fantastic scripture so just go look up those numbers uh, Deuteronomy 111 is the blessing upon everyone and mm. how the Lord will bless us for a thousand um, a thousand times you know but you just go through and look up um, from Genesis to Revelation all of the scriptures with that address 111 and, and find out what scripture speaks to you and then begin to stand on that. Every, then every time you see 111, you go immediately, Lord, I know you're speaking to me about this blessing and I know you're blessing me. And just um, when he's speaking, you can tie into that and say, I'm calling on that blessing right now because he's actually, he's actually initiating that conversation. Well, Stephanie, we're gonna take a break right here. And Stephanie had an encounter with Jesus in her basement laundry room. So we're going to find out about that in just a moment. We'll be right back. The strain of a loved one's illness can be deeply upsetting. The anxiety of waiting for news and the lack of breakthrough can be devastating. When it feels hopeless, you need strength. Learn how to meditate on God's Word and benefit from over 60 healing scriptures that will bring you peace, hope, and encouragement with Sid Ross Healing Scriptures book. This powerful tool will grow your faith and usher you into an experience with God that brings healing to your whole person. Download your free copy of the Healing Scriptures book at sidroth.org forward slash healing. Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, with Stephanie Skierman. And before we took the break, Stephanie, we were talking about how busy you were. I'm sure you still are, but you, <laughs> you were raising six kids, and you didn't feel like you even had the ability to spend the time to hear Jesus. Correct. I'm sure that had to be extremely frustrating. Yeah. So what happened that you got your breakthrough? Well, um, as you know, when you're a mother, you or, or any kind of a parent, the next thing is an emergency. So the diaper needs changed, the next meal needs right, fixed, everything. Right. There's just doesn't seem to be a minute of the day, a many times that goes by where you have time to actually um, do anything, let alone think or pray. And so I, I one day I was, I was feeling this way. I was completely frustrated. I was. Um, beyond, I, what, I, what I wanted to do was get everything done and then spend time with the Lord. Right. That never mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. I did it over and over and over and it never happened. It was never, I was never a possibility. So uh, this particular day I went down to my laundry room and I saw the piles of laundry <laughs> and I, I just laid my head over onto my big huge pile of laundry and I just began to weep and I said, mm. Lord, I will never have time. Uh, there's just not enough time to 
ever spend with you? How am I ever going to do that? And it was almost like as I breathed in, the Lord said, I want to do it with you. Mm. And it just broke. Everything broke right there. I began to weep. I said, Lord, I want to do this with you, too. <laughs> and so it, it, from that moment on, everything I did, didn't matter whether I was changing diapers, cleaning the floor, the most mundane tasks became extremely important because I was doing those things with the Lord. And mm. that's how many times we think of ministry as being in front of a lot of people mm -hmm. or doing. But no, ministry is right in your home doing the most mundane tasks. If yeah. you're taking care of an elderly person, you're taking care of a baby. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, it is as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord is pleased when we take those on as our daily task. That's what he's put our hands to. So why not do it in the glory of the Lord? and worshiping while we're doing Absolutely. it, just talking to him. Makes so. sense to me. Yes. Now, what if somebody, you know, they hear this so far and they're convinced, all right, yeah, yeah. I, I need to hear Jesus and yeah. I want to hear Jesus. But, you know, it says in the Bible that God's thoughts are higher than That's our right. thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. And mm -hmm. I, how am I ever going to understand even <laughs> if he is talking to me? That's right. <laughs> um, I have made it my life goal to read through my Bible every year. Um, this year I'm on my, I've just finished my 40th time mm. and I'm, I, I, uh, I'm not that, I read through two or three times on some of those years mm. because I finally upped it to where I could get through more than one time a year. And, and that's really a key. <laughs> I mean, if we want to hear what he's saying, the, the entire Bible right. is what he's saying, but yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. And I learned that as I would read through the word of God, something would come up during my day and it would trigger back to where I actually was in the scripture at that time. The word of God is so relevant. It is way more relevant than today's newspaper. Um, so the obviously <laughs> even it's more relevant than what's on the internet. Let's Absolutely. put it that way. Yes. That makes it even more relevant. <laughs> um, but the, the, the word of God is more relevant even tomorrow than it is today. It is perfect for our lives. It's, it's our lifeblood. And we need the transfer of information that comes from heaven that is in the Word of God. It is relevant. It is real. It is powerful. It is life-changing. The Lord has set me free and healed me from just reading wow. the Word. Wow. Now, Jesus speaks to different people in different ways. He has yes. kind of a different language, maybe, yes. for different people. Absolutely. So um, how do you uh, figure out what unique way he's speaking to you? Well, um, you know, I can hear the voice of God and I know I can see pictures when I close my eyes. The Lord speaks to me that way. And I, 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 because we've practiced hearing from Jesus, we know that's what he's, how he's talking. But there's a lot of people that say, well, Stephanie, I can't hear Jesus, at all. especially when we're training children in the prophetic um, there's, there's some of them that can't see a picture in their mind, mm -hmm. but they can actually get a picture and draw it on paper. Mm -hmm. And so we actually had an experience this last year where we had a child that we knew was hearing from the Lord. We knew he was picking up things and he was not able to say it with his mouth. And so we got out the paper one day and got the crayons out and we just said, okay, just do a simple picture of whatever. And of course we did this with everyone that we actually, the two children that were not able to um, hear from the Lord, they could draw and they had the most accurate mm. prophetic pictures that we had seen. And we were sh shocked and just yeah. blessed yeah. at how the Lord was speaking. <laughs> so there's many ways that the Lord can speak art, um, music, he speaks, you may wake up in the morning hearing a song and just know that that's from heaven. And it may even be a secular song. The Lord spoke to me one time about uh, <laughs> um, how sweet it is to be loved by you. That, that wonderful right. yeah, yeah. old song. <laughs> and I, and I, I, my heart just wept um, mm. when, he, when I, he was, I knew yeah. he was singing that song wow. straight to me. Wow. And I was like, oh, how sweet it is to be loved wow. by you. <laughs> so what a precious way. The Lord speaks to us in gentle, precious, uh, sweet ways. And uh, okay, catchy. Stephanie. So I understand I need to hear God's voice. Yes. I need to hear Jesus. Um, I'm with you. <laughs> and I've, I've discovered how he speaks to me, I'm hearing things from him, but sometimes I don't 
I don't understand what he's saying. I don't get it. I don't, <laughs> what do I do? Go back to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The Word of God will teach you his thoughts. His, his ways are higher, higher than our ways. His understanding is way higher than ours. Now, Jesus spoke in parables in the Word. And so many times if you have a picture of something that keeps repeating, like we said, numbers, but right. there may be a picture, maybe fish come up or something. You keep seeing fish over and over. And what's the Lord talking about? Well, go back to the word of God and say, Lord, let's, let's I'm going to look and start, I'm going to search for fish. And I see you're, you're doing this. And it could have something to do with multiplication. It could have something to do with, even, uh, fish can also represent lost souls that are coming into to Jesus. Um, could be even praying for other believers because we know, even the Christian symbol is a fish, so it could mm -hmm. be praying for other believers and um, missionaries or whatever. Maybe the Lord's calling you to something. So begin to tie whatever picture that the Lord is showing you over and over to something out of the Word of God. And, and uh, even a story, go in and search, even do a word search through the Word of God. And the Lord will show you. You okay. will know. We need to take one more quick break. And uh, when we come back, uh, one of the things that Stephanie says you can do if you're not sure what God's saying is you may have to just wait, wait on him. And she had an experience where she had a dream and she didn't know for five years what it <laughs> meant, but God showed her. So come right back after this. In the routine of everyday life, hearing God's voice can be a challenge. It's easy to get distracted from being focused on His purpose for your life. Through the ISN app, you can watch our 24-hour online TV network every day. You can also gain access to over 700 new and archived episodes of Sid Ross' It's Supernatural. Learn about how others have encountered God, seen miracles, found healing, and had heavenly encounters. Understand how to walk in the supernatural of God every day. Go to your app store and download the free ISN app today. You are watching ISN. The It's Supernatural Network. Welcome back to Something More. And when we took a break, we were talking about what do you do when you're, you're hearing from God, but you're not quite sure what he's saying? And Stephanie was talking to us about what you do in that situation. Of course, one of the options is to kind of wait, wait on him. And you had a, a dream mm -hmm. that it took you five years before it was like, <laughs> I got it. What was that dream? <laughs> oh, it was, it was so funny because at the time we had a church uh, by the name of Activation, and um, it was an excellent church. I loved the fam, loved the loved the group of people there and the pastors. And um, when what my dream was is, I was in my vehicle in the parking lot of uh, another church where I happened to be at that time. And at, while I was at this church or in the in the parking lot, I these ladies came over from Activation and they handed me the keys to the office. Um, of activation. And I, I stood there dumbfounded and could not understand. And so I, I was trying to hand the keys back <laughs> even in the, you know, at the, when I was finished with the dream, when I woke up, I went, oh, I, I didn't want those keys, you know, <laughs> I don't need the keys to the office. I'm okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was thinking I was going to have to do another job, I think. But uh, six years later, so I mis misread that dream completely. I oh, thought it was goodness. a literal. And so many times the Lord is speaking to us in a dream. Right. And if we'll step back and look at it metaphorically, it was such a simple dream. Stephanie, I'm handing you the keys of op of the office of activating, and he was talking about the activating of gifts of the mm. Spirit, which I totally understood, and that's what I do. I'm handing you the keys to the office of activation. Wow. Very simple. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I want them. <laughs> it only took a few years to get it, you know. <laughs> I said, oh, no. <laughs> I completely missed that one. And it was so simple. So many times we make things too difficult. The Lord yeah. wants to speak to us in the way that we can hear. And if we, if, if we make it too complicated, it, 
it's only because we make it too complicated. It's not because he is making it too complicated. Yeah, and in fact, one thing that you've taught is that a way that we can kind of mess up the communication is if we insist that God talk to us in a certain way, but he wants to communicate in a different way. And you experienced something like that with, with uh, wanting to see angels. Tell exactly. me about that. Exactly. Um, I was, uh, this has been a lot of years ago, but it was such a real experience to me. I was, we were driving, I was driving down to um, a town in Colorado uh, to go to Israel. We were planning a trip to Israel. So I had to make this long trip by myself. So I would take all these CDs and listen. And I was listening to CDs on angels and how people were seeing angels and they were talking about it and teaching about it. And I was like, Jesus, I want to see angels. And I was just, just crying out to the Lord, Lord, I really want, everybody and their dog can see angels and I can't because literally the dogs, we know every time we're in a, we were in a Bible study at the time, every time these dogs would come out when the angels, we knew they were seeing the angels because yeah. they weren't looking at us, they were looking behind us. Mm. And so I was like, everybody can see them and I can't, why can't I see them? Right. And so on my way back, it was a dark night and I was on the road alone, it was very late at night. And the Lord said, Stephanie, put your hand out right in front of you. And so I did. I put my hand out right in front of me in the car. And I put, it felt like I put my hand into a warm bubble. Mm. And when I pulled my hand back, it felt different. And I put my hand back in and I felt the warm bubble again. And I thought, oh, the Lord said very specifically to me just before he told me to put my hand out. He said, Stephanie, how many senses do you have? Mm. And I went, oh, and I repented immediately for saying, demanding that he speak to, that he just uh, show me angels, let me see angels, because I had been saying, I want to see angels, I want to see angels. Yeah. But the Lord wanted me mm. to sense the angels and know that they were in the room and trust that he was there with me. Absolutely. And so it gave me huge confidence to know when the angelic is around, and that has been a great help to me on the mission field. Mm. Uh, it's been a huge help with children. Children need to know that help is there from heaven, and it's uh, a powerful, it's a, just a powerful understanding yeah. that you can sense, smell, taste, hear all of those senses. Yeah. We can sense all of those ways um, we can hear heaven. Yeah. Well, this has been great. We're just about out of time, but if you would take just about a minute and Pray for the viewer right now, because again, I feel like they're probably convinced they, they need to hear from God, or maybe they already are a little bit, but they might be extremely busy. They need that breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So pray for them right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we just come to you knowing that you are the king of the universe, but Lord, you care about every single detail of our lives. And Father, I'm so grateful to you for how you love each and every one here. And Father, each one watching, you, you just say, you're my favorite one. You're the beloved one. And Father, we just bless these, your people, with the ability to see, hear, smell, taste heaven, and, and the things of heaven, the things that... I, Father, I ask that whatever is going on in heaven will go on in their homes, will happen in, as it is, and that's in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, we just ask that you will speak to us in the way that you want to speak to us, in that gentle, precious way that you do, and help us to hear your voice, your still, small voice, and not write it off. We want to honor how you speak to us and what you want to say to us. In Jesus' holy name, we love you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being with us today. And Thank you for watching today. Uh, if you have not been hearing God's voice, you need to seek Him. It's not an option for you. Your destiny depends on it. So seek Him today, and if you don't know Him, by all means, today is the day of your salvation. Thank you, and join us again for something more.
Did you know that you spend a third of your entire life sleeping? Why? Because God has your undivided attention so He can communicate to you through your dreams. Stephanie Skurman not only has a gift for interpreting dreams, but she also has been able to teach others, both young and old, how to do it also. Now she wants to mentor you on how to interpret the dreams God gives you every night. Dreams are so amazing that they give us tremendous detail of our very own life and they apply to our life. It's so important that we pay attention to our dreams. Call now and get Stephanie Skurman's powerful brand new book, The Dream Book, and three-part audio CD teaching series, Dreaming with the Holy Spirit. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9604. Stephanie's powerful book, The Dream Book, is a beginner's guide to understanding God's voice while you sleep. Even children can be taught to understand the meaning of their dreams. Through this easy to understand book, she will teach you how to interpret your dreams using scripture and the Holy Spirit's guidance. Even when dreams are embarrassing or frightening, capture your dreams in a dream journal. Expand your creative ability by learning to catch heavenly treasure from dreams. Understand the meanings behind nightmares. Learn what to do even when you experience deja vu. Discover your own personal code language with God. Learn to unlock the language of dreams and visions and take hold of God's special words for you. The book includes real dream examples and how to interpret them, a place on every page to write notes, lesson keys to help you retain what you're learning. Through Stephanie's anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Dreaming with the Holy Spirit, you will clearly understand while you sleep, daily distractions are absent, creating a space for God to communicate with you. Through dreams, God intertwines heavenly messages and details from your life into a meaningful tapestry that you will remember. Through these dreams, God may offer wisdom, bestow comfort, or inspire courage. In this exclusive CD series, Stephanie will teach you how to use the wisdom hidden within your dreams to solve problems, receive new direction, help move you forward in fulfilling your God-given destiny and purpose. She will help you unlock the language of dreams and take hold of God's special words for you. Stephanie also prays for you to have special encounters with God, as well as prayers for understanding and interpreting your dreams. Most of the dream books that I've looked at, they're so complex. And the operative word is this is practical, this is supernatural, yes. and it's easy. I just believe there's something even beyond the words in this book. It's an activation book. We want to get this brand new book and the exclusive three CD set dreaming with the Holy Spirit to you as soon as possible. Don't miss out on getting Stephanie Skurman's powerful brand new book, The Dream Book, and three-part audio CD teaching series, Dreaming with the Holy Spirit. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9604. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9604 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today.